We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show. Coming at you at the desk again. Whoops. We were out all day. Yeah. And we just got back and it's dark. There's nothing to show you outside. Right. And you guys should have saw it. This, this couple, a lovely couple, just seriously bought a piece of land. And then they just built their own little house on it. It's way out there in the hills. There's no electricity. There's no nothing. It was amazing because like, to build that house is probably like $300. Well, maybe the house was a bit more. The kitchen was like $300, and it's amazing. They had like a hand crank blender. That's where we were all day, out in the hills. So they probably bought the entire land. It's a little inflated for gringos, which means people from the United States and other countries. But it probably the land probably cost them about 20000 and the house probably cost them 3000 they built it with their own two hands. And they're just building right now. They're just like, it's just like they do piece by piece. And we could live there. Like it has a roof. It has a bedroom. It has everything you need. It's very inspiring. So if you wanted to come out to Ecuador and you really wanted to, there is a way. Bala. No. Okay, so people wanted to talk about Jobs? Yes. Some people were asking on the comments from the video yesterday. They wanted to hear what kind of jobs have been going on in our lives before. No, in your lives. <laughs> I, I said Angela's had like 20, like 57 jobs. <laughs> so people want to know what those were. So I thought. So I just did a quick brainstorming trying to remember. Or the things that I've done, and I found, I think, about 20 of them. Wait! Let me give it a shot. Why? This woman here, when you're living in your truth, and you're in your bliss, and everything like that, everything you ask the universe for comes. She's like a walking manifestation magnet. So check this out. She was living in Iceland. I almost look, I almost made her move back to Iceland so we can continue the business. She, this, <laughs> this little diva here, who, the little ghetto girl from Crawley, was making like thousands of dollars a month when she created her own business. You know what she decided to do? She went to Scotland and bought these little these little rocks. I didn't buy them. And oh, you got them for free. Wales. That's right, from <laughs> Wales. She goes to Wales and she gets these free rocks, right? And then she takes a nail... And she like starts digging lines in there with like arrows and stuff, making what are they called? Ruins? <laughs> Runes. Runes. And then she decides to go to all the Icelandic tourist shops, selling them for like a million dollars a pop. Bah, bah. And they would sell them like crazy because the tourist season, she was making a fortune out there. They were very pretty. I was carving runes onto slate, which is a stone that's very easy to carve onto. And I was making it into little, uh, something like a pendant, or you could use it as a keychain or something. And they were like super popular tourist item in Iceland. It was a bit random. And check, so she was making thousands of dollars a month. Am I wrong? Thousands of dollars a month. And so it's not about like, oh, coming up with the business idea. It's about doing it. This woman here is a man of, she just does it. Okay, so what happened after that? She gave the business away because she didn't want to see it go down to nothing. She gave it to this woman and guess what? She probably makes $100 a month because she doesn't do it. So if anyone's watching in Iceland and you'd like a nice little business to take over, we might have some ideas. So... I was like, let's go to Iceland, let's make this, like, just during the summer where you're not freezing our buns off and we could, like, pull in some cash and then come back, and that was, like, before we were in Ecuador. So, I, there was even no need to do that. You know why? Because she makes money here in Ecuador. You know what she does? Maybe I should tell them. 
she decides to make all our helpers help her make kale chips and flax crackers and coconut jerky and little tahini yum balls, right? Mm-hmm. And then we just bring them to the stores. And then they sell them like one day and then she goes and collects her money and we're back. So should I tell the nice people some of the things that I was doing? Yeah. All right. I'm going to start with some of the ones that might be useful for some of you to know about. There was someone on the comments saying that um, they're trying to work out what to do in terms of volunteering at the moment. And so, okay, here's some of the things I was doing. Can I say something really quick? So Angela has this business out here in Ecuador. If she were to stop, guess what? Nobody would be doing it because nobody is willing to do the work. Nobody wants to do work. It's all about... Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So when I was in New Zealand, I was whiffing. I'm sure a lot of you have probably <laughs> heard of that. Um, whiffing stands for Willing Workers on Organic Farms. W-W-O-O-F. And whiffing is when you go and help out at someone's organic farm for maybe four to six hours a day. It depends. And you get your board and you know, your room and your board, your board and lodging and blobs, whatever it is, for, in return. So you could be doing all kinds of things depending on what their organic farm is. Um, I traveled all over New Zealand doing that. So sometimes I was on like a cattle farm with thousands and thousands of cows. Sometimes I was just at someone's house helping them weeding. Sometimes I was in like a flower ranch and all kinds of things going on. So weren't you 300 pounds when you were doing that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was right before I kind of hit my peak of obesity. Can I tell them the stories that you told me about being 300 pounds and doing things like that? Sure. Okay, so um, every once in a while they would like be walking on hikes and then she wouldn't be able to keep up. And is that right? Was it? Wasn't there like snow or something? Okay, here's another one. <laughs> like, uh, like in India, were you in India? I was. I at one point. You, you said you were nervous of being around kids, right? Mm-hmm. Because kids were just like, "Why are you so fat?" And then in India, there were people like, because it's not. It, the obesity was less there, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you were on a bus tour, and you uh, got yeah. off, and the man said what? Yeah, we were going on a... I was on this tour, and we were stopping at this place where there was a lot of steps going up to a temple or something. And the man, when we stopped the bus, the tour guide said, Okay, we're going to go walk up to the temple. Everyone, come on, except you, because you're too fat. And you wouldn't be able to make it up there. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of that stuff going on. So how did you, we're totally going off the job situation, like, but how did you go from like, I mean, you took a lot of hits, right? And now you're just like, it's such a different life. It is such a different life. But it's, you've done like. It's just gone. It's like you, spiritual queen, guys. No. Okay, jobs. All right. So that's what I was doing in New Zealand, woofing. Look it up online if you're interested. Um, in Sri Lanka, someone was asking what was I doing there. I was um, doing a lot of funny stuff in Sri Lanka. Mostly I was teaching English to primary school children, which was really funny, really a lot of fun, a lot of singing. Um, I was also at one point working in a tea factory <laughs> in Sri Lanka, which was also very amusing, but in a totally different way. Can I ask another question? Mm hmm How you, okay, I, I was a homebody before I met Angela, then I met Angela Stokes Monarch, and I traveled for five years straight. So you've been traveling for how many years? I think it was about 14 years. 14 years this woman was traveling, doing woofing in Sri Lanka, primary school teaching and security jobs with little people that would drive by. 
you would do like the the you collect tolls or something. You'd work at chocolate shops. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I want to know, like, what, were you running from something? Were you like, <laughs> what, like, going from place to place, doing job after job? Like, like, what, what was the situation there? What was? Um, I was just really interested in long term volunteering. So that, it didn't have anything to do with you being overweight. Probably it was all part of the same package. Looking for love. Everyone's looking for love. Okay. So that stuff I was doing in Sri Lanka was with a program, which might be of interest to some of you. And actually, I honestly don't even know if it exists anymore, but it did at the time when I was looking into all these long-term volunteering projects. That one was called WUMA, W-Y-M-A. And I think, if I'm remembering right, it's the World Youth Millennium Awards. So you might want to look that up. Um, really interesting exchange program. So that, that thing, all the stuff I was doing in Sri Lanka was to do with that exchange. Um, Wait! <laughs> oh, no. I think we should share with everybody what today is. What is it? Ah! Uh, Baba. Five years ago today, I got an email in my inbox from a woman named Angela Stokes, and she was looking for someone to carry her ebooks on different raw food world we raw food websites. Isn't that true? Mm-hmm. And I just like, oh God, here we go again. Another person wanting to carry their books on my website. I'm like, Pfft. and I went to her website, rawreform.com, and I was like, whoa, when I saw her picture. I'll carry your book, whatever else you want. And then one email led to an email, to a Skype email, to a Skype phone call, to an airplane ride. And when Angela arrived at the airport. <laughs> no, Baba. Not say it? No. Oh, that's a really good story. <laughs> Baba. No? No. I already said it. No. Baba. Okay, moving right along. Five years ago. Jobs. Let's do it. Um, we're running out of time. What we else? We can continue tomorrow. Okay. I'm that. Um, and I'm going to tell you about another program because some of you are wanting to know about that. So I did another one. You were asking what I was doing in Iceland. It was another program. It's called EVS, European Voluntary Service. And again, I don't know if this still exists, but it existed back in the days when I was doing all these projects. And... What that involved for me was I went to live in Iceland in an eco-village called Solheimar, which you can look up online as well. S-O-L-H-E-I-M-A-R. Are the white star children, star masters, Jedi? What is that? <laughs> it's an eco-village of about 100 people in the countryside in Iceland. And it's a mixture of people with disabilities and able-bodied people living and working together doing all kinds of arts and crafts and gardening and mostly what I was doing there was working in the greenhouses and doing woodwork and art and theatre and all these kind of different things. And we're going to continue tomorrow. Uh, See you soon. We'll really start right now. I'm just going to stop it and then we'll... Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.